Hi guys, welcome back to another video where today we were unboxing these three tire micro models. Make sure to stay to the end because you don't want to miss this one. But well, before we jump into the video, make sure to like, subscribe and turn notifications. Jumping straight in, we've got this Veilside RX-7 with Han and the classic Fast and Furious livery. This model, as you can see, comes in the orange box, the same colour as the car, which gives a nice touch as some of the other models from Time Micro do come in just an all black box, but this makes it seem a little bit more expensive and a little bit more premium. As you can see the model out of the outer packaging, you can see the Han figure, and it also comes with a little bit of tack to stick him down, because standing these figures up can be quite a pain. This model is numbered and as you can see it's number 455 out of 999. Unfortunately the wheels haven't quite got that deep dish like they do in the Fast and Furious film but nevertheless the colour really pops and the detail is insane on this model. As you can see the colours on this model are so vibrant, the orange pops so much and is so deep and the black is so glossy it's almost like a mirror. Paint application is also not thick at all in any places, as it never is with Time Micro models. With this model now in hand, you can get to see the detail a bit closer, like the calipers and the brake discs. Now the wheels do spin, but not very well. They do move, but with a little bit of force. But as you can see, everything is clearly marked on the back of the model. You can see all the rivets for the body kit and everything is just, like I say, very nicely detailed. These models are in the price range of 20 to 25 pounds, with the 25 pound ones usually coming with a figure or opening bonnets or hoods. But this one, with the figure, you can definitely tell it is worth the 25 pounds. For example, the headlights and the tower lights are very clearly marked. You can see the headlights surround very clearly. You can see the veil side badge front and back. All the features on this model are also very nicely accentuated. Not too much, so it's ridiculous, but very nicely and very realistically. Proportionally, I do feel like they've got this model absolutely bang on, as Han isn't too big for the car and the car isn't too big for Han. The veil side kit is very large and does make the RX-7 a very wide car. But you can really see how much the colour does pop in these shots as it's so vibrant and it's got such a deep colour to it. Let me know your thoughts on this model. Do you think that it's very close to the original out of the film or does it still need quite a bit of work? And if so, what does it need? Up next we've got this Mark IV Supra A80Z in the Advan livery. Like I mentioned on the RX-7, the outer packaging was the same colour as the car. You can say this with this model because obviously it is black and red, but it is just the standard Time Micro black box. The packaging for Time Micro may seem simplistic, but when stacked all together they do look very uniform and very neat, and for some collectors that is a huge bonus. Off the get go you can see how much this model pops in the case and that says a lot for how much is going to pop out of the case as well. I believe this is a must for any JDM fan or Advan Racing fan because it will fit in absolutely perfectly and will look like a very high end model. Unfortunately the model isn't numbered but not to worry as you can see the detail definitely makes up for that. As you can see the rear tail light and the housing forum is so realistic and the reverse light is very prominent. The gold 5 spokes are either a love or hate. I quite like them, but I know a few people who quite despise them. But the good thing is, if you do choose to wheel swap this, they are a screwed base, so it does make it a lot easier. The decal application again is absolutely perfect on this model, with you not being able to see how they've been applied or where they've been applied. Now 
Now with the model up close, you can again see how well the decals are applied and how clear they are as well. We've been able to read every single sponsor and every single logo very clearly. You can also see that the wheels do spin very nicely on this model and they spin better than any other time micro that I have had before. With the wheels being five spokes, you can clearly see the brake caliper and the brake disc, which also stays in place when the wheels move. Again, a very nice touch as obviously the brake caliper doesn't move when you're driving. Both this Supra and the RX-7 on the wing mirrors both have the chrome decal to replicate being the mirror as well, as you can see there. The tyres are also treaded on tyre micros and that might not seem like a big deal but when you're doing up close shots of the wheels, a treaded tyre definitely adds to the realism. As you can also see this model has the rear heated window effect, again just another level of the realism gone into these models. As much as I am a huge fan of Fast and Furious and the Fast and Furious franchise and how iconic it is, I must say this Supra might just take the cake on how detailed these models are. As you can even see bonnet latches or hood pins on the front. The carbon side skirts are in absolutely incredibly detailed. The carbon pattern is very nicely done with there actually being an effect in it and not just straight white lines. You can also see that front mounted intercooler clearly being an intercooler and going down into the pipes on each side. Now I know a few models do have that but the realism and the proportion is very nicely done on this Supra. And to end the video off we've got this Evo 10 in the HKS livery also with a figure also coming in the standard black time micro packaging. Like I mentioned with the Veilside RX-7, the figures are extremely detailed and you'll see that on other time micro unboxings and in the clips coming up. I definitely speed this part up as it took me about 10 seconds to actually unbox the item as it was quite wedged into the box, but it was because the acrylic case wasn't quite sat on the box properly. As you'll see, it just pops off very easily. This model is also numbered and it is number 264 out of 999. This model also has a matte finish which I didn't really expect but is a very nice touch and it really sets the model apart from anything else. It just seems to make the HKS livery absolutely pop colour wise with the matte grey background. The Evo 10 did really get lost amongst the Evo family. But this model, they have done an absolutely excellent job of capturing what the Evo 10 actually is. This model looks very premium and also in hand, it definitely feels it. You can also see and read each sponsor very clearly and make them all out. Again, the headlights and the taillights proportionally excellent and they've got the shades and the tones in the castings as well on just like on all three of the other models which again adds another level of realism when taking photos of these models unfortunately a downside of this model is the exhausts as you can see they do look quite cheap and you can't see through the exhaust you can just see a solid piece of silver a really nice detail is the all carbon spoiler as you can clearly make that out when photographing this model Again, the wheels on this model do spin, but with a little bit of force like the RX-7 and not as smooth as the Supra, unfortunately. But you can really see the realism here in the model and the figure, with you being able to clearly see the HKS logo on the jumper of a 164 scale figure, which the realism and the detail is very, very nice. You can also clearly make out the facial features on the figure, which for that scale is an incredible feat. The fact you can also make out the badge on the grill, and it is quite a simple badge, but the fact it's very clear is a very nice detail. 
But for me, the main difference between this model and all the others is the interior. You can see a belt buckle and a harness on each of the seats, which I've never seen on any other model from Time Micro before. You can clearly make out them bucket seats, and for photographs and realism, that gets so many extra points. This Evo also comes with a heated rear window feature, which again, adds extra levels of realism onto the car. And you can really see how much them bucket seats do pop on the model. I'm gonna wrap the video up here guys, but thank you so much for watching. Make sure to drop a like and share it around with your friends. And please let me know any other models you'd like me to see review. Like I say, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.